It's morning wherever you are. Clover's in the back. He's probably like, how can I escape? I want to escape. But I hope you're all having a great uh, day today. Happy Monday to you. Uh, I wanted to go live today <laughs> on this channel because I had not prepared a video. I was working on one. I had done the B-roll and everything, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be done. Let's just do the video live for you guys. And it would be a really nice chance to connect with you guys live again since I haven't been live for a few weeks. Um, so I want to say a quick hello to everybody in the chat. Hello S Oak, hello Tina, hello Jasmine, hello Missing Zindi, hello Soli, hello Judith, hello Ginger Ram, hello Miriam, hello Tracy, hello Tanya, hello Lauren, hello Debbie, hello Shawan, hello everybody out there. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you Ginger Ram. Oh my gosh, Clover looking super sad. Hello JB. Um, so let's chat a little bit about what's been going on. Uh, Alyssa, hello, hello everyone. So um, we're mostly, mostly going to talk about um, the, the apartment, how things have been going, um, and what is pretty much coming up. It is, it's the romper room, yes it is. <laughs> So I hope you guys are all doing awesome. Let me just stop. The, oh, I don't have my stop sound button there. That's fun. I just made my like new sort of stream deck uh, thing going on there. And I guess I neglected to make a stop sound button. Um, hello, Jillian. Hello, Scott. Hello. You have two Cocker Spaniels. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but Cocker Spaniels are the best dogs. So, um, so quick updates on our home. Uh, I haven't done an official apartment tour yet. That is something that I do plan on doing in um, a few weeks after I've had a chance to finish the first round of official decorations. Um, but for now, uh, I will just let you guys know some updates I've made to the space. So we moved uh, from our condo in February, uh, late February, was it February? early March <laughs> into a rental uh, for the for and it's the first time I've been in a rental um, in a long time in a long time oh you want to know who sings the opening song that is a an artist called I want to call the stone keepers I want to say is the name of the band um, stone keepers anyway 
Um, because the arrangement is, uh, and if you guys are, are not caught up, um, my husband got a, a new job. He had had like a, a kind of a, a lot of different stuff going on. Uh, due to the pandemic, he had a really great job prior to the pandemic. Pandemic happened. He started working from home. Uh, actually before the lockdown, because he got sort of freaked out. He had a premonition that we were going to ask people to work from home and he he was right. He was working from home for a while. That job, of course, due to pandemic stuff and all that, uh, he was laid off. Uh, He got a a new job (laughs) after that, which had an an office for him to return to uh, when, when it was safe. And we just figured that he was going to return to an office this fall. Um, But we were sharing an office, uh, which was like not the best. Um, you guys saw me, saw him in the background of, you know, all these live streams and stuff. And it was just a lot of like chaos with him having meetings and my having meetings or filming. And it was just, it got to be too much. But we, we had always went with the assumption that he would return to an office. Um, and a great opportunity came to him. Actually, he wasn't out searching, but it came to him and he got a job which has no office. (laughs) It's a, it's a remote work from home job. So we decided that we had to move from our two bedroom condo to a three bedroom apartment temporarily because we didn't want to be home shopping during the pandemic. We just decided that that wasn't something we wanted to be doing. Um, it was crazy enough anyway to like move. Uh, so we decided to wait till it came, it got like, everything calmed down a little bit and there was like vaccines to start house hunting. And also because I don't know if anyone's aware, the housing market is very strange now during the pandemic. Um, detached houses, standalone houses are ridiculously overpriced and have insane bidding wars happening with them. And condos appear to have the same kind of market, but like we had trouble selling ours. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Uh, we we lived in a in a in a very nice, a very nice place um, and had a hard time selling it. So um, the unit upstairs from us was also for sale. We sold ours. Uh, they took theirs off the market 50 days after they put it on the market. And it's, I think it's on again with like different agents. So we'll see what happens, but the condo market's very strange. So in the interim, we're in this rental apartment. So a lot of you have seen this rental apartment. It's really nice. It's three bedrooms. So I have my own office. Eve has his own office and we have a master bedroom, of course. And we have two bathrooms, which is great. It's great. It's very spacious. It's awesome. So a little bit about the updates in this place. Oh, the condo was beautiful. I know. Oh my gosh. It's so, I miss, I miss the floors, truthfully. Um, I miss because it had all, all hardwood floors and I miss our nice big kitchen. I really missed that kitchen. That kitchen, I had set it up sort of really perfectly, you know, and, um, and it was, it had space for everything. And we went from like, we have like half our, our upper cabinet size and half our lower cabinet size. So it's, it was a real adjustment. We, there was a lot of stuff that went out the door, okay? Um, and a lot of stuff I, I, I did not film. Um, oh, Michelle, is it, is it messing up for you? Oh, I hope maybe refresh, refresh. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just put that down there. Refresh, refresh. If you're having trouble with the stream, probably refresh because it looks good on my end. Um, so uh, now that you have your own office, it must feel nice. It does feel really nice to have my own workspace. Um, stream space, whatever. Um, it's been really nice. So, um, Colton, we'll be talking a little bit about the Roomba S9 today. Not the full uh, like review, but just a little. We'll do be doing a bunch a bunch of mini reviews, and that is one of them. So please stay tuned. Okay. Um, so uh, the first update. Uh, two lives in one day. I know, right? It's crazy. <laughs> I've been in front of my computer doing interviews all day. So I just figured, um, cause I thought I was going to have time to film more stuff. I just really just filmed like B-roll for a couple other videos that I have to, sh- to upload later in the week and didn't have time to like shoot the talking head stuff. So I thought I would do it in front of you guys. <laughs> um, so the whole deal with the apartment is we, um, I wanted to, uh, 
moving gave me the opportunity to update the style of the decor a little bit. Um, we initially bought all of our furniture and decorations and stuff for our apartment in 2015. Um, 2015 is quite some time ago in terms of like trends, color schemes, decor, all that stuff. Um, and I wanted to change it up a little bit without buying so much new furniture and so many new things. Um, but I wanted to sort of um, update the look of the apartment without spending a, a ton of money. So the first thing I did actually was replace our living room rug. And I know that um, a bunch of people like that rug. It's it's the Mars Love rug from Ikea. The rug is discontinued. It was discontinued like like seven or eight years ago, maybe. Not eight years ago. It can't be eight years ago. It got to be like six years ago or something. Uh, it is discontinued. The rug was in super, super bad shape that we, we had because we had had it since 2015. <laughs> and it was in like, it was in terrible shape. It had its stain stains and it was like crushed and just it, it had become not beautiful um so we just we ended up getting rid of it we did we did get a new tip I guess it's probably going to be a temporary rug for the space and we will I'll, I'll let you see what's going on with that yep so we're renting an apartment Dylan because uh we uh live uh we have we may we now both work from home so this is us um, dealing with the old rug. And the, the old rug actually was too large for the space anyway, because it was it was all the whole the whole of the couch was the back legs and the front wet legs were being covered or were, were were on the rug. And in this space that we're in right now, that rug was too big. It was it was overtaking the space a little bit. So I got this rug from Amazon and guys it was only like a hundred dollars ish this rug was really affordable and do you like how Clover is just sitting there while we move the couch like back and forth he's just like oh peasants can you can you move that a little bit to the right can you move that a little bit to the left peasants thank you very much um and so the new rug is a is a little bit more of an updated style a little bit more boho, a little bit more of a, a muted kind of pattern, just a like a cross a cross hatch pattern, nice a gray and white, really simple. It's actually it's a shag rug, so it's pretty comfortable. It would be more comfortable if I put a mat or a pad underneath it, but I just wasn't thinking <laughs> when I bought the rug. But it was it was it was pretty inexpensive, and the rug is it's a lot smaller. I think it's like seven by six, and this size is a lot more flattering to the room and to the space. <laughs> As you can see, I was like so excited when we put the rug down um, and we'd gotten all this stuff um, prepared. And I, um, oh, the video froze for you? That's so weird. <laughs> I can still see it over here. Refresh, refresh. Um, so you can see Clover just like being, being his like royal Clover self. Um, I really think that it's really important to update style if trends change over time. Um, but you don't have to buy like brand new pieces of furniture or like lots of brand new things. Um, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Colton, the, we'll talk about the Roomba on the carpet. It does not like this shag carpet. Um, I have put a, a little like, do not, do not, uh, <laughs> do not vacuum, uh, sort of, I've given a do not vacuum signal to my Roomba for the rug. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the Roomba. Um, but I just wanna like inspire you that if if you feel like your space is a little bit out of style, um, that you can change something as simple as like the rug. Um, and new throw pillows. We got new throw pillows for, well, I got new throw pillows. I'm not gonna say like we went out and bought them together. I was like, I, I of course I'm in charge of everything. Um, the the new throw pillows are more of a neutral. They're more they're a little more boho, and I'm gonna repurpose those sort of really busy gray and white patterned pillows for something else. Um, so this is this color scheme is a lot more neutral, a lot more muted, and I really like this style a little better. And we're I'm sort of revamping the entire apartment to look like this. It's I'm I'm referring to it more as like cozy minimalism. Um, I mean, it's sort of cozy minimalism, but like with a little bit of industrial too, but like 
not a lot of industrial. So um, that is the first thing. The second thing I will say that I've purchased for the new home, and a, a, a few of the things that I purchased for the new home are not super, they're, they're expensive. I'm going to just put the disclaimer out there. These are things that I, I spent like adult money on, <laughs> you know, when I was buying them. And you press the little buy button and you're like, <laughs> you're like, oh no. That's, but, but I think that these things are worth it. So I think that these things are worth talking about. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, um, we bought a new set of sheets and, um, linens for the bed. And we hadn't bought new linens for the bed in like well, again, since 2015, this is like when we lived in our first condo, <laughs> the one bedroom apartment that you guys first saw on the YouTube channel, we hadn't bought new linens since then. And when I, when I initially bought linens for that bed, we'd like cheaped out kind of. Hello, Doc Marmalade. Welcome to the stream. We kind of cheaped out a little bit. Well, I mean, I cheaped out. I keep saying we, but it's me because I'm in charge of all that stuff. I'm in charge of going to Bed Bath & Beyond and doing all that stuff. Um, and, you know, they, we had these really beautiful jersey um, sheets and comforter cover, and they were really nice for a while. We had, and then we got some different sheets, like percale cotton sheets, which were okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now that I sleep very hot. <laughs> like at night, I like, I like to be covered with the comforter cover, but I also get hot. So I needed something that was going to, to be a quality linen for me to sleep in and be not hot. So I finally, I looked into getting actual linen sheets and linen, uh, if, you, or if you're not familiar, I mean, you know about, if you guys know about linen pants, it's basically linen sheets made of linen made from flax, the flax plant. So linen sheets are not the cheapest. However, however, if you are a hot sleeper, a linen bedspread, linen sheets, linen uh, flat sheet is going to be your best friend because it's going to be very good in, like in airflow quality because of the weave and it's going to be good at absorbing any of that um, uh, sweat from your body if you're if you if you sleep hot so that you don't wake up in like clammy sheets and stuff um, and it feels very very good on your skin. I didn't get the hype about linen sheets until I got a, a whole set and I was convinced. So I, th this is our new bedspread and this is our whole set. And we did buy it from um, Brooklinen. Uh, Brooklinen is sort of a famous internet brand. Um, and this was not cheap. This was like a $400 set of everything. We got a comforter cover, a fitted sheet, flat sheet, uh, and four pillowcases, and I got to choose a different color for the um, for the back pillowcases. What about bamboo? I haven't looked into bamboo sheets yet. I don't know if they're as moisture wicking as linen. So um, I I'm not I'm not sure. I I could look into it. Um, so anyway, I'll show you the comforter cover. It does go on with buttons. It's very cute. Um, and it, it went on, and I, I will tell you that um, we have washed these a few times and they wash beautifully and they get white each time. I, all I have to do is put like some OxyClean in there or something. Um, you wash them. Do they get their own separate wash? Because <laughs> they're special, right? <laughs> I give them their own spe separate wash and like I like, I got, I actually got a, it, I stained one of the pillowcases with my, um, with my, um, sorry, I'm just gonna show that message. With my hair bonnet, you know, if I wear like a black hair bonnet at night and I stain one of the sheets, I was like, oh no, not the sheets, but the pillowcase. I washed it, came right out, came right out. Um, so I, th these come highly recommended, highly recommended. Um, so I, I mean, I, I think I would recommend any linen, bed linens, if you are a hot sleeper, or if, like uh, Emily, you are perimenopausal <laughs> and tend to have a personal summer experience. 
Um, I have just been so, uh, it's worth every single dollar I paid for it. And I don't say that a lot about things. So um, if you were on the fence of like whether or not to like splurge on, you know what, I'm not even going to say splurge. I'm, I'm going to say treat yourself to a nice set of linen linens, then I say do it. It's totally worth it to me. Like I have, I have slept so much better since then. And they do feel, they have a texture to them, right? Cause they're linen, but the, and you, you expect it to feel scratchy, but it doesn't. It actually feels, it feels, it feels nice. So we're going to say yes to linen. Okay. Now we'll talk about the, um, Joseph, Joseph four in one prep station set. This one I put a title on. I don't know. I was feeling myself in Final Cut Pro today. So this is a, um, actually stop, stop the video. Oh no, play the video. I didn't put a stop button in here. Bad K, bad K. Okay. So, um, and I'm sorry when I'm showing this to you, it's wet. <laughs> so, cause I had just cleaned it, but, um, it's a, uh, it's a salad spinner. Uh, Grater, slicer, and spiralizer all in one. So I I got this pro product initially to save on space because we only got like half of our kitchen storage back. Um, I wanted to save on space, and um, since I I am not allowed to get rid of the old salad spinner. But this one I've been trying out for a few months and I have to say I really like it. I bought it from uh, Amazon because it was available because I saw it on containerstore.com and I was like, why don't you have it? So I ordered it from Amazon and it came in like two days. It was amazing. And um, it's been really good actually. I really like it. It's very nice. So here's the slicer. You take it out of the, you store the little like the parts inside of the salad spinner. There's the spiralizer. And then here's the little grater. So far, I've only used it with for cheese. <laughs> um, but you take the top and the little, the, the top parts of it comes off. Oh, I'll show you how it spins first. It's got a really nice spinning feature. It's so nice. Look how wet it is. I used it to like make my spinach uh, breakfast this morning. So it's kind of wet. So you, what happens is you take the top off just like that. And then you put a new top on and it just snaps in place and you can do whatever. It's very nice, <laughs> I have to say. It's a really nice thing. And it comes with a little like protective thing where you, so that you don't hurt your hand. Hello, Ingrid from Australia. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the stream. Um, so yeah, that's the little thing. So if you don't like, so you don't like slice your hand open and everything fits inside of the salad spinner and then you can pop the top on and you're done. It's a really nice little product. I think this is retail, uh, th I want to say like $30, um, but it's 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 very nice. It's very nice. Now we're just looking at my kitchen counter. Isn't this nice? <laughs> is this like, that's the way I end the video? I thought I put another clip there that was like, you know, just the product shot on there. <laughs> so... Uh, hello, Maria. Hello. Hello, Marlena. Welcome to the stream. Okay. So, and hopefully, I think I put all the links to everything I'm talking about in the description. If I have not, please remind me and I will put them down there. Um, Maria from West, West Roxbury. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> hello. Okay. So now we'll talk seriously about the Roomba S9. Okay. So, uh, as some of you may know, hello from South Africa, hello. I do have a new Roomba that I got for my birthday as a gift for my husband. <laughs> and it was funny because I was mentioning that in the video and somebody was like, I want to see like a, a really a gift that you're actually like a real gift that you want. And I was like, I, I did, I wanted this. <laughs> I wanted this. So um, this is a new, a brand new Roomba. And as you can see, the shape is different. It's, ra it's round. It's, well, it's, it, the, it was round before and now it's, it's round with like a flat side. Um, and the S9 is very good. It hooks onto your network. So it, it's running uh, on Wi-Fi and it will communicate with your, um, your mop if you have a mop on the same Wi-Fi system, um, which is very nice, very nice. This 
is very loud, <laughs> as some of you saw in the other video. However, um, there is an option to put it on quiet mode, which I just found out about today. There's somebody really just revving their engine outside, sorry. Um, approximately how much are Roombas? Jasmine, I'm glad you asked. These are not cheap. Um, so the this Roomba is has a, a base which empties itself, right? So it's got another electric thing attached to it. You can get it with like a regular base and empty it itself, but this one, I'd rather just, I'd rather have the Roomba empty itself. So here's the footage from my old other video. Wow, it looks terrible. Um, oh, actually, because I downloaded it from YouTube. Um, but this base is pretty big. It's like, and it's sizable. So you can't hide it underneath a table or anything like that. Um, and this machine plus the base that empties itself, I think I want to say retail manufacturer's price is about $1,100 for this model. Um, if you, the Roomba will sell you like this and also the mop for like, I think 1400 or something. Uh, but these things are not cheap. They're not cheap at all. Um, but the whole like emptying of itself uh, thing has been amazing, <laughs> I have to say. Um, it, it will pause between battery runs. If it runs out of battery, it will go back to the home base, charge for a little bit maybe a, an hour or two, and then come back, come back out and finish its job, which I think is very handy. Um, yeah, Jasmine, they're, they're expensive. You can buy a more affordable one that is a, a different brand. I think that they uh, want, you know, some of the, the Chinese made brands um, or um, other brands are a little less expensive, but Roomba is the, or iRobot is the pioneer of the robot vacuum so they are, can charge a premium for their products. Um, robot, uh, iRobot actually is a, like a, uh, started in Cambridge. I think they was, some Harvard students started it. So they're like a local company for us. Um, but I, um, where, where you get it, you can get it from Amazon or you can buy it directly from iRobot. I would, I, I would recommend buying it directly from iRobot and waiting for a sale. Or you can buy it from um, any place else that's offering it for sale, you can get a, a discount on it if you if you wait. Um, but I I've only bought uh, the the robot mops and vacuums directly from iRobot. I won't buy them from like other websites. The so the thing about the the Roomba S9 is, do I still have my 890? No, my my best friend took it. <laughs> um, the thing about the S9 is it doesn't work very well on shag carpeting. So I do have a way of telling it to, to, to not vacuum that carpet. I'm still working on the exact dimensions of where that is in relation to the room, but it does work really well. Um, I'm gonna show you a little a little scene of like the, the app menu that uh, it uses to, or that you can use to control it. So as you can see, this is, uh, I think like last Thursday and you can see it's got a, it, it mapped our whole apartment and you can see it, you can, you can tell where it went exactly. So, um, it went everywhere and you can tell where it like actually it, it, a lot of charging time. You can see there, actually I'm going to pause it or I'm going to go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. Um, stop, stop it. So, um, there was a lot, there was a lot of cleaning time compared, there was a lot of charging time compared to cleaning time, right? Because you can see here it says it charged for an hour and five minutes, but cleaned for an hour and 43 minutes. So it was doing a lot, right? Um, Cause it, but it was, it was cleaning on like the highest, like cleaning mode possible. So it was doing the best job it could everywhere. And it does a really great job uh, in the apartment. Um, it works well on, low pile carpet, um, but does not work well on any super high pile carpet like a shag carpet. Actually, we have two shag carpets in our apartment. We have one in our, in our bathroom and one in our, um, one in our living room and it gets stuck on those and do not advise. So though for those rugs, I recommend you vacuum those manually and you can have your Roomba do the rest. Um, do you empty the bin manually? No. Um, the bin, uh, the, there's a bag inside of the, um, the, the empty, the emptying the base. 
And when that bit, when that bag is filled, you'll get a message and you'll just replace the bag and throw the bag away. So that is the only other thing to, to say about it is there's no satisfaction of knowing how much dirt it's picking up. I never ever see the dirt. The dirt is picked up in the vacuum, sucked up into the base, and I never get to see it. Like I, I, I would have to physically go and get the bag out and open the bag. Yeah. Um, yes, barriers or, um, or uh, so I have, some, I have some barriers built into the space to tell it to not to go places. So, um, and the other thing I have to say about the Roomba really quickly um, is that I, it, it's not devoid of software errors or anything like that. I have run a training run a couple of times, had it run, and in the middle of its training run, it may run into some error where it just gets stuck. And I had to reset it, which was unfortunate. Um, the question is, is it loud? Yes. However, um, we'll just let this play. It is very loud because it is much more powerful than the 890 was um, and probably like the 900 and models that um, I had after that. Um, it is very loud compared to those models. However, however, I want to say that um, you can change its cleaning behavior, as you can see here in this demonstration of the app. Um, I tried Quiet Clean today, and the thing about it is Quiet Clean was great. It does take longer, though. It will run much more quietly, like you'll hardly hear it, um, but for, but it takes forever. Like it's going around, it's like, like it's going around, it's like, okay, I'm gonna be quiet, but it um, it does take longer because it's not it's not as powerful. Um, but the, the detailed clean, if you will turn that on, it's super loud. Yes, really, really, really stinking loud. Pretty loud. Um, but it gets, the, it gets the job done. It's great on carpet, um, like because we have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in all the bedrooms. Um, and it worked great. So that's all I got to say about that, I guess. Oh, and I, did I show the barriers and the maps? I think I did. What am I doing now? What am I doing now? I forgot what I did at the end of this video. I think nothing. Yeah, this is the end of the video. <laughs> That's the end of the video. Um, so, so far I really like the Roomba. Um, it's, I mean, it's been great. It's been saving me lots of hours of backbreaking vacuuming. Not that I, it's vacuuming is that bad, but like, uh, this is a bigger apartment than, you know, we had before, and it's, it does some of the job for me, you know. Does the map work well? It does work very well. It's running right It's running right, right now. And actually, the other great thing about the, the iRobot Roomba is you can tell it to tell the mop to vacuum after it's done, which is handy. So after it's done and done it and, and gone back to its, its dock and, and had uh, emptied, it, the mop will start, and it's a beautiful friendship. Is Clover scared of it? No, he's not. <laughs> he's over it. He's over it. <laughs> um, will it switch to high on carpets? Oh yeah, then it will switch to high on carpets and be low on, on hardware floors. That's exactly right. Yeah. It um on carpets it starts to really suck. And then not suck as in it's bad, but suck as in it the suction um uh, increases and then when it gets to wood floors, it it relaxes a little and is not as loud. Does it work on all floors? Yes, it does. It works very well. Um, it even goes in the bathroom, works on tile, works great. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I forgot to do, I forgot to do a little B-roll for, um, but some of you saw me on the on Sharks YouTube channel. <laughs> I do have a Sharks steam and scrub. I will talk a little bit more about it later. I really like it. Um, I don't know if it's right for everybody, but I think that it's right for um, for people who really want to sanitize floors um, and who have a lot of like bathrooms to clean. Because I've noticed that I only use it in bathrooms, and I use it if the floor is like really dirty and I think it's disgusting. You can sanitize and steam floor and really get up like stuck on stains. It's great. Um, I don't have that in. Um, the description, but I'll talk about it later. <laughs> I'll talk about it later. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about that I bought for the new home and product recommendation is this Yamazaki spoon rest. Now look at it. It's weird, right? 
<laughs> it's totally weird. Like, you're like, that's a spoon rest? Yes, it's a spoon rest. And it's like, I mean, first of all, it's Yamazaki. So Yamazaki is one of the more, like, beautiful organization brands on the market. They make really beautifully designed, just well-made things. Of course, they're a Japanese company. So I love them. <laughs> they're great. Do you prefer that to the mop from Makers? Oh, I mean, it's, it's different. You know, um, the, I use that for like, if I need to do a quick mop job for my, and then I need to do it myself, then like I do it, you know? Um, and, um, why did my, my thing just disconnect? Everything disconnected. Um, no, it's connected now. So, uh oh, uh oh. All right, are we good? Okay, we're good. There, spoon rest. Is that not cool? Is that not the coolest thing? Isn't that cool? That, I mean, it's, it's, I, cause I was using like the traditional spoon rest. You know, you just put your spoon right on there. You just like, but sometimes it could kind of get all over the counter. But this one, is way cooler, way cooler, right? It's available in both black and white. And wait, talk about, let's talk about this cool feature. Like you have a pot lid, right? It's hot. You don't want to put it on the counter, boom, on the spoon rest. And you can put your, your pot lid and your, uh, your, your, uh, your spoon on the spoon rest. So I thought that was pretty cool. Check it out. Check it out. So I thought those were like the coolest things I got for the new, for the new home. Very good. So it's made, um, it's actually not, it's not plastic. <laughs> it's made from, it's made from metal actually. So that's how it's, uh, it's pretty safe for hot items. So I highly recommend. It's like 20 bucks. So it's not like the cheapest thing, um, but it's not the most like expensive Yamazaki item either. Cause y'all know the Yamazaki bins can be like 20 bucks and, and like 30 bucks. And you're like, it's just a bin, <laughs> but they are beautiful. They make some really, they make some really lovely products. Um, do they make it in metal or wood? It's metal. It's metal. The inside is plastic. The little like plat part that the spoon sits in is plastic, um, but the other parts of it are in metal. Do wooden work? Do wooden spoons work well in it too? They do. They do. And I actually want to get some wooden spoons, but like they the hand washing of, of it all turns me off from wooden. But they're just so they're 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 lovely. <laughs> they're lovely. Have I thought about getting Clover a new friend? Um, not immediately. We might want to move to a new, um, a new home before we do that. <laughs> uh, do I have trouble with pet hair tangling? Um, you know, uh, he gets, he gets his fair share of the mats, but we work it out. I was actually doing a whole thing with him yesterday. I was, I was shaving all of the mats off because <laughs> sometimes he gets little mats behind his ears a little bit. And um, little mats uh, on on your bouche <laughs> a little bit, so um, he gets he gets sort of pre groomed before his bath time. Um, so I'm I'm actually filming a uh, another pet organization video <laughs> uh, because I'm doing uh, I'm a, a collaboration with a brand and then and then something for my channel. So um, you'll learn how Clover has all of his his things organized in the house. And we actually, it's, it's going to be fun because we set up a little like bath station for him and it's really cute, I think, because <laughs> he loves, because I, this, this um, building has a, like a pet um, washroom, but it doesn't work very well. So we, we made arrangements to wash him in the bath and it's been very good, except for my, for my back. But it's like, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Where did I get a spaniel bowl? I got it from Peko actually. It came from Peko and it was like, it's it's not as conical as like the ones you can buy from like Etsy or someone who handmade them, but it's conical enough so that his ears don't go in it. It's amazing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I found it at Peko. I was like, oh my gosh, I am so excited about it. It's lovely. I love it. 
Um, and it's it's really like nice and heavy ceramic. So I would I would go. Was it Petco? Yes, it's definitely Petco. Um, that and his little like slow feed bowl I got from Petco. So he is a he's a Petco king. <laughs> he is a Petco king. <laughs> Get garden knee pads. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a good. That is a good idea. That is a good idea. I should get them anyway since I'm like repotting stuff lately. There's been a lot of repotting going on well, and a lot of repotting that should have gone on. Um, but I rehomed some of my like problematic plants <laughs> that I just didn't want to deal with anymore. I was like, who wants a calathea that is a pain in the butt? Not me. Like you can have her. <laughs> it's been really fun. <laughs> it's been really fun. How do you deal with clients that want, that have a lot of things in a small space, but can't get rid of anything? Um, can't get rid of anything. Mm. Um, well, there's, there's can't get rid of anything in the sense of like, they actually need all the items in the space or they, or there's the, the can't get rid of anything in that they're like having trouble letting go and like they can't like get to the point of letting the things go. Um, and the latter is a little bit more complicated, you know, truly. Um, and that involves a lot of just sort of talking down of the, of the, how much do you really need? How much do you really use? Um, and the, the talking down of the what ifs, the what ifs come in there and they're very powerful, you know, like the, what if I need this someday? What if I, you know, get into this very obscure situation, which is unlikely to occur, um, I had plans for that, you know, but I bought it like five years ago and I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Those kinds of things. Um, but if it's really like trying to fit things in a small space that actually need to be there for the client, um, then you sort of get creative. And most of that is using vertical space, like using the walls to store items, um, storing things in really like unideal places, but places that work like under the bed storage, um, finding um, smaller versions of items that or more compact um, versions of items that 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 may benefit them in some way. Like let's say like they have a big TV stand that's taking up a lot of space in the space. And then maybe I would suggest that we downsize that and use some of that space for storage or you know or find just basically multi use space d like discover multi-use spaces. I find multi-use spaces are, are much more easy to deal with than, you know, like, like spaces that where you just do one thing in the space, you know, <laughs> Nola. Oh, thank you so much for this super chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, so I find that like that, that defining the use of the space is very important because like, so if someone has like a room that's going to be like a studio, a, you know, uh, but also like a kitchen and a living room. It's setting up zones is, is very essential. Um, and the bike channel, who wants to live in a box? Everybody in New York wants to live in a box. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really all about like what the, the needs of the person are. Um, because like, I mean, let's talk about like really populated and expensive areas like New York and Boston and Chicago, where the real estate is expensive, but everybody wants to live there. It's very, it's a very desirable area. Then you're, you're kind of forced to live with a lot less space than someone in like, you know, a suburb of Ohio or a suburb of Maryland does. So I just, I really want to encourage people who live in small spaces to sort of think out outside the box in terms of um, how they store things and also what you can live with. Um, you, it, sometimes it turns out you can live with a lot less than you thought you could live with. There is a, um, you know, I, I definitely only need like what, like two coats? really need two coats. Um, do I have two coats? No. I live in New England and I'm a singer and sometimes I need to look fancy going to concerts. So I'm, I, you know, I can, af I can afford to make spaces for fashion. Um, but if that's not super important to you, then, um, you know, you can make spaces it, it, in that area and I, you know, I can, you can have more of something else. So I think people need to decide what's, important to them, you know, having variety in one area and then being very minimal in another. And that's, that's, 
usually the consensus I come with with clients is like, well, I you you can we can keep like the the forty tea towels <laughs> that you may want. And some people really love the, like they have. And again, we we talked about this a few weeks ago. The difference between collection collecting and um, what hoarding or or what people refer to as hoarding, um, collecting and hoarding are very very different. Very are very different. Um, one is compulsive and other is very purposeful. Um, you you want to make sure that you're doing everything in your home very purposefully and not compulsively, right? Um, so because in one of these spaces is a healthy place and one of these is not. So I always want to encourage people to be in a more healthy space with their space because. That way they can be happy. <laughs> they can be happy. I'm thinking about sewing the selling, the selling, the I can't talk. Thinking about selling the sewing machine. Um, sometimes I think we sell stuff just because we don't ever use it. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's sometimes I'll come across something and it's something and I always want to encourage people to organize and live for the person you are right there today. Like, if you're ever thinking about like the person you were 10 years ago, maybe you liked to sew. Maybe that was like a, something that was brought you a lot of happiness and maybe it doesn't anymore. And that's a really heartbreaking thing, right? When you are thinking of that person you were like 10 years ago and you had so much fun, it was like memories and you made all the things and then maybe it's just not who you are anymore. That's a really hard thing to come to grips with, right? But sometimes those are the best things and then you sort of let that go. And if you ever need another sewing machine, you can buy a tiny one. <laughs> that takes up a less space, a shiny new itty bitty mini sewing machine. <laughs> I mean, there's all those those things that you use, like maybe like very occasionally. Like I want to say, like my stand mixer, I think only gets maybe like three run rounds a year, you know. Um, but she gets her run arounds. <laughs> I'm making the marshmallows. I'm making the cookies and uh, the muffins. The muffins. Oh, I want to say, I made. This is off the subject. Now I'm just r talking. I made some really amazing recipes from Downshiftology. Do you, do you folks ever look at that channel, that YouTube channel? It's fantastic. I made these banana nut bites. They were amazing. They were amazing. It was like a banana bread. It's like a little banana bread in a little protein bite. It was very protein heavy because it was just like made like nuts and uh, I think there's honey in it and some other stuff. Oh my gosh. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> Please post the link. I'll put the link in the description after I done with here, but the channel is called Downshiftology. And I made the, um, the, what else did I make? I made the, I made the falafel bread. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh, and I will definitely, um, more ways to use the Cricut. Don't worry coming up on the channel actually like a little later in the week. So get excited. I'm working on a big project tomorrow. So um, I'll give it, I'll, I'll do a little tease. It is of like a little portion of my office. I have like my Monica closet there. That's like full of all the stuff that, um, that didn't get properly used in, um, in our new space or, or hasn't really found, found a purpose in our new space. So um, I'm redoing it tomorrow and I'm very excited. It's basically my music closet. I have all my sheet music in there and my books and stuff. And it's like, it's fantastic. Cause I have been like, I, I have been using my sheet music uh, for the last week, just like, cause just for fun. Like, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sing through the Bach Magnificat just for fun. And I found this YouTube video or this YouTube channel that has like some chorus um, practice uh, tracks with like just the mezzo or like just the tenor or just the bass. And I'm like, I have an online duet partner for this. <laughs> and it's been so much fun, so much fun. So I was, I just want to fix it up so that it looks really nice so that when I go in there, it's not like a disaster. It has all my like plant soil and like stuff to like kill bugs and all that stuff in there too. And it has my Cricut and my printer 
and my office supplies. I say office supplies. It's really like two drawers with like some tape in it and uh, all my craft stuff. And it's going to just be my like my fun closet. Uh, where'd you get the blanket that covers the whole couch? Amazon. <laughs> I got it from Amazon. I feel like it was like, I went to like 30 bucks. It was not expensive. It was not expensive. Oh, you miss, <laughs> you miss my singing. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give a quick plug, quick plug. Um, I will be in a performance that is going to be live streamed on the 19th of June, which is due Juneteenth. So if you know, you know. But if you don't know, Juneteenth was the was the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, so uh, freeing slaves of slavery, and it is a concert uh, with uh, all artists of color, and we are all singing uh, composers, uh, African American composers, and it's a fantastic program, and it was it was recorded on Friday and will be live streamed on the twenty first. 20, oh my God, I said 21st? No, the 21st was the recording. It's gonna be live streamed on the 19th. It's gonna be very good. Um, I was very, very, very nervous because the the music was not in my personal best vocal tessitura. Like I like I was joking. I'm like it. It was like it's a it's a bass. It's a baritone tenor mezzo and like another mezzo. <laughs> But um, I feel like I did the best job I could at the time. And I had some real like emotional breakthroughs with like the imposter syndrome. And I do always use quotes uh, because it is still something that I struggle with, with, with the thing, because I just was like, this is not, I, I don't know if I can do this. And um, I'm, I just, I pulled it together, pulled it together. Uh, what are your thoughts of white people celebrating Juneteenth? Do they celebrate Juneteenth? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really have any strong thoughts about this. Um, I mean, Juneteenth is Juneteenth. I, it's, it's, I, everyone can do what they want personally. Like at home, you can do what you want in the street. You can do what you want. However, like it's, it's very personal how I feel about it as a black person um, and so that's kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't feel badly about it um, because it's a, it's a celebratory worth occasion. So why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? Um, yes, I will remind you closer to the date of the concert. I do think that there is like a ticket buying thing involved. So um, if you cannot afford to come to, I don't know how much tickets are. I will have to um, ask my friend who is in charge of it. Is my camera, did my camera like decide not to focus on my face? How rude. How rude. <laughs> um, but so that was, and, and, and that's really where I've sort of been. It's been a very busy time, <laughs> like a very busy time. So I've been mostly kind of trying to um, get the apartment together and uh, do, and, I, I was, and I'm mainly making contact, content at this time for, um, for brands, um, and that has taken up a huge amount of my time, huge amount of my time. Um, which composer songs do you think? William Grant Still. Um, we also did um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, arranged by William Grant Still. Um, what else did we do? Oh, and a local composer who is from around here, who is a, a lovely mezzo of color. Fabulous. She was fabulous. What is your biggest fear? Biggest fear is probably like disappointing people. I think. <laughs> I knew, I don't want to get too morbid. I mean, suffering actually is my, my biggest fear. So, I mean, if we're getting deep on a Monday, that's really my biggest fear. <laughs> have you heard of the Cambridge Magical Singers? Yes, I have. I have. Um, 
Okay, we look I look good. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, sometimes my camera, if I if I if I go like that, it'll focus on the couch. And then um because it has like nice depth of field, it's a little blurry, but like sometimes it forgets that like my face is the most important thing in the frame. Thank you very much. And it's like, hi, I'm gonna focus on your couch. Ja couch. <laughs> that is a tough question. Oh, your best friend used to sing in bass in that group. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, so uh, in closing, <laughs> I want to say apologies for like no upload today. This is the upload. I figure this has enough, I think, good info in it so that you, uh, that it's, it's worth watching. Have I done any musical theater, Chloe? I was a musical theater kid before classical music was a, was permanently, <laughs> before it took over. I was like, I was the musical theater kid. So yes, tap, dancing, jazz, all that, all that nonsense. <laughs> oh my gosh. He is a Boston area bass singer. Wow. I'm sure, I'm sure I know him. Because we all know each other. <laughs> the Boston music scene is very insular if you don't know. Um, I feel like every music scene in every city is very insular, but Boston in particular, I feel like is very, very insular. We all know each other or know of each other or Facebook thinks I know this person probably. So it's kind of, it's a really strange kind of way to be like you'll be at a gig and you'd be like I saw your picture next to my friend on Facebook or I thought I so you came up in my Facebook feed or something or I like I know you I've heard your name it's very weird but Boston music scene especially with singers it's very insular we all know each other especially if we're all working um it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy how are we talking about animal crossing <laughs> all your hubs is what <laughs> Is it, uh, your is cooking and you're playing, uh, watching and playing Animal Crossing. Well, that is perfect. That is, Jackie, you have the life. You have the life. My husband just left to go uh, ride his bike around the, around town, around the neighborhood. But like, I would be like to be playing Animal Crossing right now. <laughs> I'd be like to play Animal Crossing right now, but I, I probably will in like, um, in a few, in a, in a little while after I feed Clover. Oh, you're in a love of Leslie University? I didn't know that F doctor. This is your old stomping grounds around here. I love Leslie. I've been to Leslie a few times doing stuff. Doing stuff. <laughs> Doc Marmalade, thank you. I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why did my thing disconnect? Like, guys, the Mac Mini, like, is a great computer, but, like, every now and again, like my peripherals disconnect and I get mad. Yes. So if you if you have not and you're watching and in like the stream, um, I would appreciate a, a quick click on the thumbs up button. It helps the video and helps me out uh, here on the YouTubes. <laughs> here on the YouTubes. Oh, I'm glad you guys like the Animal Crossing streams. Those are fun. Those are like if you know these. Not that like one is work and one is is fun, but like the this channel is a little more involved in terms of like making sure that my in info is together and, and typically talking about home organizing is just a little more serious. Um, but Animal Crossing is, is, is not serious <laughs> and, and, and has been very, 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 very fun. Have, am I, am I vaccinated yet? F doctor, I want to talk about that. Yes. So I had my first vaccination on um, in the in the beginning of the month, and I just had my um, second one on Tuesday, and um, so I'm, I'll be fully vaccinated on the first of June, um, and I got Pfizer, so I Pfizer five G gang, you know, I'm waiting for my um, my my chip to start working and I'm um, my 5g to go off. But, um, it's been, it's been a, it's been a ride though. <laughs> it's been a ride. I did not feel good after my, um, after my second shot, but I'm good now. Uh, 
oh, what's the podcast about? It's about nothing. It's literally the Seinfeld about, about, of podcasts. DK radio show dot DK podcast.com. DK podcast.com. It's a lot of like trashy talk. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of trashy talk, but it's kind of fun. Uh, second jab jabbed you hard. Oh, she jabbed you hard. <laughs> Jeez. Like I, I hardly felt it. They were like, Bing! and I was like, okay. And then I knew my arms started cramping up and they're like, oh man, I'm like, this is my arm. And my arm still hurts a little bit. So I, I feel like I have, I still have a little bit of the fatigue. I feel weird. And I also feel like, um, either like I have super bad allergies or I'm still having effects from the shot because like today, even today, I still have like sort of a headache. I had a bad headache after the shot, like for like days, sort of low lying. But like today is especially bad because I have my eyes are like watering and my my sinus cavity is angry. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on and I feel kind of crummy. Oh, and also like, again, TMI, monthly visitor, the day of the Pfizer shot, the second Pfizer shot. So like... We love a timely uh, queen coming, <laughs> coming right on time. It was great. Felt great. Had a great time. Uh, a month later, still sensitive. She was young, though. Um, I was like the only sore arm from both shots. Uh, maybe I couldn't tell. I'm 40. I'm always tired. <laughs> this is a mood. This is a mood, and I can really, like, I also, I also feel like I'm just, like, always tired. You know, like always tired. I'm just like, is 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 it time for bed yet? I love going to bed. I especially love going to bed now more than that. It's like linen sheet action because like that's the best. I lo I love my sheets. I actually want to go out and and buy like another set of the like a, a replacement set, like a just the sheets. Um, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> We will see. Oh my gosh, Clover, it's almost time for you to eat. You want to say hi before we go? You can say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. And say hello. Does Clover pee on your carpet? No, he's house trained. <laughs> he's house trained. When he was a puppy, he did it a few times. That wasn't fun, but he knows better now. This whole home is his den, isn't it? Isn't it? I was just talking to Eve last night about the whole um, uh, potty training situation. I remember I took him out every hour on the hour for a month and a half when we first brought him home, month and a half. Where do you get linen sheets? You can get them anywhere, but I brought them from um, Brooklinen. The link is in the description below. They're not cheap, just disclaimer. Uh, but but linen sheets from anywhere are not cheap. They're they're pretty expensive. However, um, to me, worth every penny because I am a hot sleeper, <laughs> and it changed my life. Like I was so much happier after I got the sheets. I I have, I have no regrets, no regrets. What's my favorite food? French fries is my favorite food. <laughs> oh, did I say food? Did I I said the I said the word food, huh? Yeah, I know I said food. I said food. Finally bonded my three rabbits together. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. You have bun I didn't know you had bun buns. I love bun buns. I love bun buns. Wherever do you find a, a King Charles Spaniel? You can uh they're around. <laughs> They're actually growing in popularity. I think they're very popular in the States now. They're, they're formerly only really popular in the UK. Um, but now they're pretty popular. How are linen sheets in the winter, though? I'll report back to you, F doctor. I, th I think that supposedly they're supposed to be good. I think they're supposed to be like kind of like a fur coat, you know, keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. Right, Clover? Do you think I'm talking to you? I am kind of talking at you. I am. I am. Yeah? How does my lipstick smell? Does it smell good? Are you tired of me talking? Yeah. 
<laughs> he's so cute, you guys. He's been sleeping in Eve's office all day. I have, I've like, I haven't even seen him. I have not even seen him. <laughs> Are you been trying to adopt your dog? You had to put yours down a year ago. I'm so sorry, Driftwood Lover. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is heartbreaking. It's um, like I, I told my mom because I always wanted a dog since I was like six. I was like, I don't think I could ever be without a dog again. I think that I've I'm dog mom for life. How are the double offices working out, Art Smart? Beautifully. Beautifully. The only thing is Eve has a a really uh, a really crazy work schedule. I, he he's it's working um, on like a West Coast schedule, so he you know will start at like noon, eleven o'clock, and he's done at like eight thirty nine. So. Around nine o'clock is when I would like to go to bed ish, sometimes on on weekdays. So it's not it's not ideal. But you know, it's okay. It works out. It's been it's been it's been good. At least he's got a place to work, you know. Um and he has meetings in there all day. So I appreciate that like I don't have to hear the noise or that the noise doesn't make its way into videos or live streams, because that was a real issue. That um that the noise that he was making was you know making its way into content, <laughs> and also the furious typing. I was like, <laughs> I was I would call it the aggressive typing. <laughs> I was like, why is your typing so aggressive? All right, well I need to get out of here. Um, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for um for a little bit. We where we talked about the apartment the state of things. Um, I, uh, I will be back on Friday with a new video. Can't wait. Anyway, if you want to hang out with me uh, more, you know where to go. The, the Organized Gamer. We got stuff going on there. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys got some good product recommendations from the stream. I really enjoyed chatting with you guys. So I um, hope you guys are having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Say bye, Clover. Bye. Oh, no.